Drama City Productions.com. Has this happened to you? You come home and find a stray Nazi on your front porch and think, he's so cute, I'll feed him just tonight. But now your house is swarming with them, and nothing seems to help get rid of them. There's gotta be a better way. It's time to call in the professionals at You Did Not See That Coming Home Nazi Removal. Here at YDNTC, we take pride in eradicating every Nazi hiding in your home, in places like between your walls, in your oven and gas furnace, in bunkers and basements, in attics. Thanks to our patented Blitz Creek Prevention Program, your land will be safe from any future invasion, and that's our guarantee. Each Nazi we capture will be taken to our Stormfront Fun Center, where they will live out their days until being horribly tortured to death immediately upon entering. So give us a call at 555-4976 and say goodbye to those pesky Nazis. Call now and receive a free miniature Ark of the Covenant as our gift to you. Just leave it outside overnight and wake up to a pile of dead Nazis. So what are you waiting for? Give us a call today. What's up, everybody? It's Seamus from the Chewed Gum and Crime in Movies podcast. And right now, you're listening to Sack 'em Up Sunday's podcast. A show that talks about anything, everything, and nothing. Brought to you by two people with little to no knowledge on what they're saying. Find this show and many more at DramaCityProductions.com. Yes! I keep thinking about the whole Noah's Ark story and how, uh, you know, two of every animal and such and such. And if he, if he was, if first off, if it was a real thing, I don't really believe in that sort of shit but um if uh, if it was real and we did if he did manage to gather two of every animal what statistically do you think how many animals do you think on that boat were gay animals like gay couples i was just that when you said it i was just thinking about that because you know for one it starts off with two animals but if they're of opposite sex by the time you get off the boat you've got like 12 15, 16 of every animal you know what? but yeah if there it, there has to be there are absolutely species that are gay and so why not well hey, it's like, it's, I, I i have two cats outside and they're both boys but i mean i i you could if i didn't know what that looked like you could i couldn't tell you from a fucking male or female animal so what what like statistically he's gotta like fuck up a couple times and grab a couple dudes and a couple chicks and just throw them all together right and then you end up with like that's how crocodiles ended up different from alligators. Or like that. <laughs> oh yeah, I can see that. It's fucking awesome. That's that's a great take on it. Shit. All right. Well, shit. Um, welcome to everybody to Sack 'em Up Sundays. I am your host Brandon Fisher. Uh, Dale is once again going to be out for a little while. Uh, he he actually just had his kid a couple days ago. Um, congratulations to him. Uh, little Roman eight uh urquhart and it's it's eight with uh the roman numeral eight which i i find to be very unique for a middle name i've ever i've actually never really heard of anything like that before so i'm, I'm curious to see if that sort of starts anything off but since he's not here we uh, we're keeping this guest train rolling and with me today is uh i hope i'm pronouncing it right i should have asked you ahead of time uh kate wallinga close enough that's good uh, all right. With the uh, Ignorance Was Bliss podcast, how are we doing today? I'm doing fine. How about yourself? I'm doing well. Uh, thank you for coming on the show. Happy to have you on. W- welcome to the fucking chaos that is Sack of Up Sundays. <laughs> I mean, it's just a little bit slightly, slightly less chaotic than hanging out with my family. So it's all good. Okay, excellent. Well, this will be, be a nice little reprieve for you then. Yeah. <laughs> um Well, we got we got, I got some stuff to talk to you about. Um, I was, I'm kind of curious, but first... Uh, I wanted to delve a little bit into your profession. You uh, something about a forensic? Uh, oh shit! What's the phrase? Psychologist. Uh, what, forensic psychologist. Yeah. Um, yeah. What 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 sort of a like? What does that what does that entail? Like, what kind of work is that? It is not as sexy as people think. Yeah, right. Because when, when, when I hear forensic anything, I immediately go to like fucking bones or some shit like that. Yeah. Well, and sometimes it is like I have spent time with some like tremendously impressively fucked up people, <laughs> you know, people where you're like, like I literally I practiced under my maiden name because oh, okay. 
I did not want these people to know my last name because, as you just showed, my last name is fucked up now. And so oh, that's oh, fine. Yeah. Well, I, I, I can bleep that out, too, if you want. Oh, no, <laughs> it's anonymous. fine. Like, it's fine anymore. No, fuck it. They, people know my last name. That's fine. But when I was working in the prison, when I was working in the locked psychiatric facility, like, these people didn't have necessarily you know phones at the ready to be able to look people up but they had resources and i was sometimes involved in making the decision about whether they were going to go to prison or not and so i oh, didn't shit. want them looking me up you know but forensic psychology just means anything involved in the court system so sometimes that's you know sitting with somebody and figuring out you know just how insane uh, you know on a scale of one to holy shit is this person <laughs> and <laughs> Other times it's really sad, you know, it's like uh, custody evaluations when you've got both parents oh, okay. pointing at the other one going there crazy. And I really hated those. Like I didn't get involved in those very much. I was say, like, the, the, in, that, in those sort of scenarios, do you have to kind of play the Sophie's choice thing where you got to decide who goes where? Or? To a degree. I mean, I didn't kill any kids, but well, no, no, you know, no, okay. yeah, no, absolutely. <laughs> I, I, not that I'll admit to, but <laughs> Yeah, there's there's a, a degree of like you realize both of these are bad choices. And the problem is that the foster system isn't the great choice either. And so you end up going home like this sucks. So I didn't work with kids very much at all ever. But I did work in the New Hampshire State Prison for Men. And I worked in one of the locked state psychiatric facilities in Massachusetts. Oh, wow. Now, um. I mean, obviously, without like naming names or anything like that, um, is are there any particular like cases or clients that you dealt with that would uh, would stick out? Yeah, in in New Hampshire, I I actually did get releases signed so that I can talk about these people because I knew I was gonna. Um, <laughs> I got I spent a little bit of time with uh, there are two kids who they were called the Dartmouth Killings, and so people who are in the who lived in New England in the you know early 2000s they would know these this name of these two high school kids from Vermont just sort of decided they were going to engage in thrill killing and theft so that they could develop enough of a purse to move to Australia and like they were 16 and 17 so that kind of explains just how stupid they were right. you know and their first murder they got caught because they left so much forensic evidence behind and the people that they killed were two dartmouth professors who just happened to be home they, the kids were doing like a door-to-door -door, they were doing a fake door-to-door -door environmental survey and these people let them in oh and shit they ended up killing them both with knives so it's a pretty horrible thing so i got to meet both of them um which is like I said, it's, it's only local celebrities. It's not worldwide celebrities, well, I guess. Well, now, like, um, you, you mentioned to me earlier before we actually started recording, um, that you, uh, like, you you do kind of delve into the true crime sort of world, world as well. Um, yep. and I'm I'm big on the true crime thing myself. Uh, now being that close to like someone who's done something that horrible in the sense of like, because I mean, those are that's that's those are some gruesome murders. Um. Do, do, do you get do you get that like not I don't want to say starstruck because they're horrible people, but it, it'd be like the equivalent of getting a letter from like John Wayne Gacy or something like that. We're like, holy shit, like I fucking interacted with that person in some way. Like, does, 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 is there any sort of those two? Not so much just because they're kids and I, you know, I'm I'm significantly, you know, 10 years or whatever older than them. And so uh, you know, I'm looking at them as like you, you idiot. That's all yeah, I got. Like you, like you, you fucked know? up. <laughs> exactly. But I, I did meet Pamela Smart, who is the movie. Uh, Nicole Kidman is in a movie called To Die For. Yeah. And that's based on this case of this woman who, uh, she was like 23 and gotten involved in a, a sexual affair with a 16, I think he was 16, 17 year old that she was teaching, sort oh, wow. of, in high school, and she convinced him to kill her husband. Oh, shit, I think I might have heard about that, actually. Yeah, and for her, there was a degree of that, of like, wow, you are, you are a mess, you know? Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it'd be like running into, like, Casey Anthony or O.J. Simpson in the supermarket or some shit. 
Well, exactly. And that's the thing is that I met them and I knew I was going to meet them ahead of time. And so I was sort of able to get through that sort of, I don't want to say fangirl, but you know what I mean? That, <laughs> that holy shit phase earlier. Um, and after a while, like you see so much shit that it takes a lot for you to be like, I, I have, a, yeah, I have, I have a good poker face now. Oh, I, I'd imagine so doing it for so long. You, you kind of like just toughen yourself up to it. Yeah. So, I mean, household names, yeah, there are a few, but more to the point, it was just, it was mostly sad stories. It was people making really bad decisions. And the people I worked with most often, the most common thing that you do in it, it, forensic psychology is figure out, uh, is this person competent to stand trial? You yeah. know, and that's legal insanity is not the same as real insanity. So you can be like fucked up six ways from Sunday and yet be legally sane. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, I know it's really difficult to like, cause they didn't, they didn't even consider Dahmer to be insane, which is like fucking. Oh no, he was completely. And that's, that's what I'm saying. It's like, you can eat your neighbor and then wear his skull as a hat, but be, if you, so legal sanity be, being considered legally competent to stand trial basically you have to know what you're doing is wrong you have to have the impulse control not to do it like in front of a police officer you have to be able to work with your lawyer and recognize the people in court as like here's my lawyer here's the judge here's the bailiff that's it so that's like a really low bar yeah you know? seriously <laughs> And so ba- people are basically either they either sort of take plea deals or or get washed out before there's a trial or they're faking. And so I'll, I dealt with a lot of sort of faking and that kind of deal. But it, it, for the most part, yeah, if you can, like I said, you can be just completely what you and I would look at is like, what the fuck is wrong with that person? Kind of insane. But they're legally sane because they wouldn't do it in front of a police officer. And because they can look at their lawyer and say, yeah, I fucked up. I, I see. I, I feel like it's on the opposite end of the spectrum because someone who's able to pull off something like that and then just switch it off and on at will is that's fucking crazy to me. Like, I mean, it's I can wild understand. crazy, but that, that means that you don't want them in a mental health facility. You want them in jail. Yeah, I guess I guess that's true, too. Um, as now, as far as like, like um shit i was gonna ask about fucking capital punishment for some damn reason (laughs) oh so Uh, there's a fucked up thing about capital well death sentence is that what you mean yeah absolutely so with the death sentence i would not ever work in a death penalty case because one other form of forensic psych evaluation is that you cannot be executed unless you know they're killing you and why Oh, so if they if you can't comprehend that you're being executed, they got to keep you alive. Correct. Oh wow! I, I see. I didn't think that was the case. So, uh, so like, I mean, not to use a pejorative term, but like a simpleton gets put on death row, and they don't really understand why they're being killed. They they just got to keep them there, or do they go back to like general population? They, they basically general pop or. You know, those are the people who there's a plea deal before a death sentence ever comes on the table because you realize like this is not ever going to happen. But what happens more frequently is you get somebody with profound schizophrenia, because let me tell you, it's really, really hard to fake. It's hard. You have you are held in a mental health facility or a jail for quite a while. And that means you are observed like 24 seven. Even oh, yeah. when you don't think you are. So you might fake in front of me, but if I have access, and I do, to your records, you can be crazy in front of me. But if you're basically saying, you know, in the chow line or whatever, then fuck you. Like, I know that. And so what will happen, though, is people on death row will go off if they have really profound schizophrenia. So, like, they literally cannot determine the difference between, you know, reality is, and is not. Yeah. And they'll go off their meds as they're as their excuse is there well even, not even just excuse but just as their death date approaches they'll go off their meds because it's sort of this like look reality is too fucking hard and i know that if i stop taking my medications i don't know what reality is and it doesn't hurt so much now um ha- do are you uh are you a believer in in the death penalty i am very much against the death penalty because i think it is impractical and costly it's so expensive to keep somebody there and so somebody 
plus, you know, as a, as a psychologist, I could not do it because, so let's say you got really bad schizophrenia, you go off your meds, I'm called in to do a forensic psych eval to make sure, you know, that you're really not faking it or whatever. And then, because if you're faking it, they'll fry it anyway. But if you're not faking it, and I say like, look, yes, he has profound schizophrenia, but if you put him back on his medication, he'll be okay and you can kill him then. That's basically, it feels it, like me killing him. Yeah, I can understand that. It's kind of a damned if you do and damned if you don't sort of scenario. Exactly. And and I just can't do that. Like I myself cannot be the executioner or the step away from the executioner. And so I can't be on board. I'm part of any person. of it. Yep. No, I, I, I can understand that. Uh, I mean, my like uh, the way that they do the death penalty now, I'm not the biggest fan of. But like the the heavy metal side of me would be like, oh, it'd be so fucking badass to go back to public executions. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, that's the thing I do struggle with is if you're going to send somebody to jail for the for prison for the rest of their lives, why keep them alive? Well, yeah, like, it, it, like well, I, I struggle with that. That 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 is interesting, and it's the same. Like if 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 I get, if I get sentenced to death. And then you just put me in a cell for 30 years before you kill me. Then why don't you just call it a life sentence? I, I never understood why they don't just get it over with as soon as the sentencing is done. Well, I mean, give it a, a fair amount of time to make sure you're right. Well, get, get, I mean, get, get you your know, affairs in order. You know, say some goodbyes and what have you. And Well, and, and let the DNA testing go through. Let the appeals process go through. Like, I'm on board with that because we have been wrong. Oh, and absolutely. That's a big, bad wrong to be. And so that's where I feel like, you know what? Rather than even risk that. Just put everybody in general population because trust me, the prisoners will wash it out. Yeah, they will take care of what true. they need to take care of. They they do kind of have their own uh own, own sort of uh government within those walls. They do. Yep. Um that or did you ever have to do any part of a, were you part of any sort of parole hearings ever? Like No, I wasn't on the parole board. But you know, I would occasionally I don't think that I would, I don't recall ever being approached directly, but I was, I was a part of people being incarcerated in the first place. And then I was a part of after you're incarcerated, like one of the first things is that I do, I would do an assessment to kind of figure out what's this person's baseline because guaranteed without that assessment, you're going to come back to me in six weeks and go, Oh, I have ADHD. I need Adderall. Well, no, you don't. You're just looking for the drugs. Right. You know, and so if we kind of hit everybody with that assessment when they're not ready for it, we were, it was a little more accurate, a little. So, you know, my name was on papers that the parole board would consult. And I had to be aware of that and very careful of how I worded things. So like with the Dartmouth killers, it was two kids. And one of them is in secure housing, which is what New Hampshire calls solitary. And I really feel like he belongs there. <laughs> like, I'm not even comfortable with him being in general population, much less out in public. Like, he's he's a fucked up dude. Um, the other one was in general population, and I met him, and I was like, you could babysit my kids. Like, I, that is how comfortable, you comfortable were. I was with this guy. That He was such a follower, and as long as he never followed a big bad dude like the first one again... Fine. It's, it's just that one strong person getting a hold of the weak individual to carry out their shit with them. Exactly. Skadoosh. What's up, ladies and gentlemen? I am Famous Seamus, the host of the Tuesdays with Mary podcast. We are a 420 friendly podcast designed to eliminate the stigma that stoners are dumb. If you enjoy interesting subject matter discussed with a humorous intent, this show is for you. So come pack your bowls, roll your blunts and joints, and spark up with some Tuesdays with Mary for some higher learning. Find us wherever podcasts are available. Thanks for listening. Peace, love, and harmony. Well, um, since you, uh, I mean, I, 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 I want to take your, um, your knowledge of like psychology and whatnot, and I've. Uh, there's been some uh, some aspects of this culture that I've, I'm kind of confused about, and it's uh, it's 99% of it is the YouTube generation. I uh, I totally jumped the gun on it. I I guess it slipped past me because I'm I, I'm jealous of these motherfuckers who were able to like just talk about like reactions to shit and get paid to do it and 
get billions of views and follows and whatnot. So I took a I took a couple of the more um, abstract, like really popular crazes that are on YouTube. And I wanted to see if maybe we could break them down to try to figure out what it is about these things that gets people so interested in them. Bring it. All right. Um, well, first, I'm going to start off with, uh, are, are you familiar with ASMR? Shit, I am, but I'm not. Why do I not? Um, no, I, call call me old. No, I don't know. <laughs> I'm going to, uh, I'm, I can't remember the, the actual definition of it here. Um, to, to Google, I go good, good portion of the show. We just Google shit here. Let's see. That's fair. Um, I, and, right. and this is a vaguely embarrassing to me. But, oh, this is the, is this the, like the silly seizure sort of thing or the. It's the whispering. Um, like, uh, there, there's thousands of my thousands of these videos of people that just go in the microphones and they start talking like this. Oh, God, just... don't, no, I don't like it, I don't like it, I don't like it. Yes, yes. I know exactly what you're talking about, and I don't it, like it. it, it, <laughs> it I, I didn't mean to creep you out. It, no, it, uh, I it, know what it is. It, it, it has to, it goes along with... Uh... It, it's, um, it, it, I guess it's like, it, they say it's a, it stands for Autonomous Sensory Meridian Response, and I guess it's like the equivalent of, like, people who like to get the chills. Yeah, it's the frisson, the the chills, the that creepy, and... and uh, misophonia that's what i'm looking for that that gross out to certain noises and i have that to whispering so congratulations <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, see, i, I had it too but it, it's i mine's a mine's more to the sounds of people chewing i, I yeah can't. well this, that's a really common one i also i have i i cannot cope with the sound of water pouring if i oh, can't yeah. see it that, that that is that that's well yeah I'm the same way because I, I it drive me nuts being like where is it coming from what's the source of this well just the so I used to transcribe back before you know like Dragon or whatever transcription software was a thing I used to transcribe lectures like at Harvard for a living and wow. you know sometimes you, you I would also do like conferences and shit like that and sometimes they would set the microphone right next to the fucking water thing the what you know the water pitcher and i would lose it and i'd be t i'd be transcribing and i would like yell at them out loud and now i'm transcribing it you know what six months after they've <laughs> done the the thing and you know I, they you can't hear me oh. i just be like stop it oh my god stop you know like oh that sound bothers me I, and, I, i'm um, i'm the same way like if i'm sitting there and some it, it's like the, the chewing is my, my biggest like if i ever if i was to ever go it's it's been known on record that if i was to ever go on a homicidal murderous killing spree it's going to be because someone was chewing their gum or smacking on an apple and they would not fucking shut it up <laughs> like, like i don't yeah. understand how hard it is for people to chew with their mouths closed yeah fair yes it's because they don't have dinners as a family anymore which is its own line of bullshit but whatever <laughs> um <laughs> no i no i hear it. and that so that thing isn't that the thing where they like they'll talk through like now I'm brushing my hair or that it's supposed to be really. Exactly. Like, like they, they do um various facets of them. Like I was going to pull them up, but since you you're so adverse to it, I'm going to spare <laughs> no, you. Go the for it. I just, don't, just don't whisper it when you're doing it. And no, no, no. Like I was going to pop videos on. And so you could hear like sort of what was going on, but it's um it, the ones <laughs> I've seen are like people like, um like this one, like the most popular one I came across was a woman who has a jar of pickles and she's just she's just talking about how she's going to open these things up and she's clawing at the jar and then she slowly opens it. And then there's that really loud crunch of the pickle. And it's like, I, I just don't understand the fascination with these things. Like, I, I, I'm all for getting chills and stuff, but I feel like I could just watch a scary movie and sort of get that versus like having to listen to someone whisper at me. Well, I think it's all, like I don't like jump scares. I don't enjoy it. So you're and... not you're not a horror movie person. Not a like I like psychological kind of fuck up, but I don't like jump like you know Friday the Thirteenth type thing. Like I, I don't know, shit, yeah. yeah, that kind of thing. It just doesn't do it for me. And that that jump startle, like I don't enjoy that that frisson, that that feeling of like your skin crawling or what'd you call it, witch brain? I, I don't like it. <laughs> so I mean, that may be a case of like get off my lawn. I'm too old for this shit. <laughs> Uh, don't 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 feel bad. I'm not even thirty, and I I don't understand. I I'm not with it either. So yeah, it's just not, just not my deal. But I know what it is, and um, actually, you know, just 
this is a shout out to We're All Mad here as a podcast. She just did it uh, several episodes ago about misophonia and she did a better explanation than I can do. Um, I got stuck at, oh, I don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I don't like it works for me. That's, that's perfect for this show. <laughs> <laughs> right, um well i got i got a couple more here for you um have you ever heard of these soap carving videos i've seen a couple i think uh, okay yeah. so I, I i apparently it's a it's a massive trend that's going around uh like I, i've seen way more videos of people cutting in the bars of soap than i've ever thought i ever would in my lifetime um which like, is I, two <laughs> yeah, yeah like, like like exactly like i could see one and be like oh okay so that's what it's like and then the second one's like well it's kind of like the first one and then so on and so forth it's it's like fucking rap music these days i've heard the same song fucking five thousand times <laughs> over yeah well yeah uh, yeah. um but like, what what do you what like, what do you what would you think what do you think is uh like wh- wh- why do why are people so into these things like what do you, what's your take on it uh, people are fucked up, man. Uh, I mean, my daughter, that's that's a clinical term, by the way. Uh, cl- I, they're clinically fucked up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My daughter, she's 18 and she's in college for art. She's studying. That's her, her major. And she, hers is not so much those, but there's a, 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 a subgenre, I guess, of videos of people doing things with wax and tree stumps i mean really <laughs> and like like pouring wax on the tree stumps yeah or? like carved out burl wood which is burl is the fucked up sort of pimples that trees get sometimes yeah and they're cut off and they have really unusual and the reason i know this because she keeps sending me fucking links and i don't want them <laughs> but they, they'll have unusual sort of dimensions inside or whatever and then people will fill it with like burl wood or poly uh, polyurethane or whatever and install like light bulbs in it whatever the fuck and they end up with these art things and like the art things itself like i can be like okay yes that's art we're done like i i i (laughs) i appreciate my kids art and there are certain things i'm drawn to but then there are other things where i'm like i'm happy that you put your time into that but i am not ever going to buy that ever ever and then I get these videos of like how they're made and I'm like, what the fuck? Like, I don't care. I, I'm the same way. Like, like if, if it's done and for the sake of art's sake, like all power to you. Like I'm an artist like myself. I like to paint and I write music and stuff on occasion. So I, I'm all for that, but I feel like it's, it, it's the, uh, it's the attention seeking. Well, look at how I did this sort of thing. It makes it, it adds a, a level of pretentiousness to it that just takes away yes. from the whole artistic feel for me. I'm, immediately i'm just like i'm out it, it could be the most amazing piece of artwork i've ever seen but as soon as they're like well watch me make it i'm like fuck you i don't want to like it just <laughs> takes away from the experience yeah well the, and that's the thing is that like i i acknowledge how much effort goes into art and i acknowledge that i can't do it so between those two things i'm like i don't need to see your fate your your whether it's boiled down into a 30 second now this type video or whether you put it on youtube and it's all 10 hours of you making the fucking thing like i don't care i'm sorry i show me the end result show me a compilation of the end results but i don't need to see the process like like i'm even like pictures or like if you can like like a a quick snap of like how you went and put it together i'm guessing i'm a little more okay with that than just like watching a fast like time lapse video of you slapping this thing together but even still like like just like have just look just the concept of having to take time away from your art to acknowledge that you're making art just sort of takes it away from it for me. I think for me too, like for one thing, they're not doing it as a how to, like I would accept certain. Like guidelines, like, like, like some Bob Ross yeah. shit. Well, yeah. How to like fair. Okay. But I'm like, I'm sitting here right now as we speak, I'm knitting. And oh, wow. Multitasking. Nobody needs to see that. Like it's, it's boring as shit. Nobody needs to see that. If I'm running a how to video, then yeah, you got to see that. Like that's sort of how it works. But otherwise I'll show you the project when it's all done. Oh, absolutely. I mean, unless you're like, if you were to knit like a sweater for like a skyscraper or something, I'd kind of want to see like that go down. But 
if it's just like some standard run of the mill like arts and crafts project like I, i'm with it i really don't want to see it like kudos to you for the knitting and stuff and if you finish it up i would like to see how it comes out but i don't want to watch you do it and this is what i'm saying and i'm the one doing it and i know that nobody <laughs> wants to see this shit but i mean i'm the same way like i don't want people to watch me paint or write music or do anything like that like it just takes away from the experience and then it feels like it feels like i'm forced as an art on an artistic level it feels like i'm forced to put on a show for these people to try to create something while i'm trying to create something yeah it becomes meta the yeah, artception <laughs> that, that, that that's it right there artception i love it <laughs> oh shit well i I got a, I got one more for you, um, and this is, I think, the most puzzling one for me um, is these goddamn unboxing videos, like where uh, where people like they like if they're like, oh, I got this new product in from Amazon, and they do a whole fucking ten minute video of themselves like slowly opening the box and taking out the product and like inspecting it, and like I, I, it goes back to what you're saying, like people are fucked up, and like. <laughs> there's there's like a someone's into everything and there's like it makes me wonder though like how many how many people do you feel like are fetishizing these videos like like do you feel like there's anybody actually like jerking off to someone unboxing a fucking drone from amazon probably i mean probably somebody somebody's into anything but but you know is it really the unboxing or is it the voice of the speaker or is it the sight of their hands uh, 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 or you know what about the video is turning somebody on because uh, a lot a lot of the ones that I've – it's sad. Like I have watched way more of these fucking videos just so I can get a concept of what they are because I'm like, okay, well, the, the first one might just be whatever. But after I watched the 10th fucking unboxing video, I'm like, these are the same fucking thing over and over. It's like listening to an ACDC album. All the songs are the fucking same. <laughs> I was going to say, yeah. Um, yeah, it's Scorpions. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, right. fair. I, I, I think that – I mean, for one, I can see why people listen to that shit as they're falling asleep because we've all become so tied to our phones. Like I I routinely fall asleep to podcasts and, you know, arguably it's a problem. (laughs) You know what I mean? Like I listen to too many and I'm listening to podcasts that I already know the story of and that's what I fall asleep to. And when I say podcasts, I mean true crime like every time. Well, that's that's no I, i'm in the same boat because we uh we fall asleep every night to like forensic files and like true crime documentaries and shit like i i've met ne- myself i have never seen well i've only seen one episode of the second season of making a murderer but in my sleep i've watched the whole thing fucking countless times <laughs> great and it, it, it's boring either way if, if you guys haven't gotten a chance to check it out it's it's so not fucking worth the watch I mean, uh, unless you're really interested in watching a woman be pretentious with really great nails, like that's pretty much Kathleen Zellner in that yeah. in that second season. That's what she does. And you know, I have a certain degree of appreciation for the amount of money she's made being pretentious with really great nails. So that's fine. But well, I mean, yeah, if you can pull it off, more power to you. Like I'll give <laughs> I'll give Kim Kardashian shit every day till I die. But kudos to you for for getting a load blown on your face and making millions off of it. So, I mean, so yeah, I, I feel like oh, that's not the only place. First of all, the load landed. And so there's that, <laughs> <laughs> but, but I feel like you know, there's a thing for everybody. And I, you know, I'm not going to yuck anybody's yum. Like, oh, no, you, of course you. Not. You know, like everyone's got their. I, yeah. Uh, yeah. It's this, I, I mean, part of it would depend on what about, I, I don't believe that it's like, for instance, the specific, because people will have like a, a favorite unboxer. You know, yep. and, and so then it's like, okay, what about that person? So I would be more interested in, in that part of it. Like, w- chances are you're, you're saying, oh, I like unboxing videos to your mom and dad when you come up from the basement, you know, in the morning to, when they say, what did you do last night? <laughs> but <laughs> chances are there's something else about it that's going on. But also, like, I just feel like pick your audience. And the problem is people turn and they see that their buddy has 10 million views from you know some i'm gonna whisper about brushing my fucking hair and then eating a pickle kind of deal or whatever and they're like well i want 10 million views exactly and they just jump on the bandwagon exactly oh boy a bandwagon let me get on it where's it going straight to hell okay like (laughs) that's pretty much the the feeling and i think i mean people feel like why would i put one out there I would not, first of all. But why would I put one out there is if I needed to feel like other people were listening. 
that, you know, there's a, there's a validation to like other people notice you're alive. So like, okay. I, I don't have anything against it. I, 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 just, I guess it's, I guess it's no different than what we're doing right now with the podcast, but I, I feel like there's a level of entertainment and content here versus like it, if I have to hypersexualize opening up a package, I feel like I need to go back to the drawing board with what I'm wanting to do as far as entertainment goes. And and that's the thing. Like, I don't know if they realize they're hypersexualizing, but listen, guess what? You're hypersexualizing. Oh my God. See, not oh, from your perspective, I get it now. Oh, God. <laughs> it's the worst thing ever. Oh, man, I'm sorry. That's awful. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, man. All right. Oh, you're welcome. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Thank you so much for that. (laughs) Check out the Raw Opinion Podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, Spotify, Google Play, and wherever else you find a great podcast. Dude, dude, why are you doing that voice? Just say, hey, come listen to Roy, Aaron, and Will on the Raw Opinion Podcast for last football bets and shit talking. We're three friends in North Central Texas sitting around a poker table talking bro science and giving raw opinions. Well, fuck yeah. Well, um, what what say we uh what say we get into some random questions here? Let's bring them. Let's do it. All right. Uh, well, I'm going to start off with, but while it takes my fucking Twitter an insane amount of time, I'll I'll start things off with uh with one I've got I've got made up for you. Um, and I'm not big on zombies, but it came to me, so fuck it, I'll ask it. Uh, if you if you were going to be attacked by any zombie celebrity. Who would you want it to be? Like if you were if you were in a zombie apocalypse scenario and there was no hope, you're you're about to go. This is it. And then you look to your left and you're like, holy shit, it's fucking George Clooney is about to like bite out of my neck and shit. Like, like who would you like be mo- most okay with going down for? Um I think Bill Curtis, who was one of the first ever true crime guys. Oh, okay. He did like American justice and shit like that. And just, you know, if I'm going to go out, I'd like to go out, you know, by means of somebody I, I respect. All right. Right on. It's a, a nice you do a, do a true crime writer too. And it's not like a, not like Harold Schechter or anything like that. Nothing against Schechter, but he is definitely like top dog right now. Is he? <laughs> I don't even is, know. I don't, Sorry, I, dude. I, I, mean... I, 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 don't, I don't know. Um, like I, when I, a lot of the true crime shows I listen to, they get all their fucking like source materials from them. And I tried... I'm trying. I'm actually reading a man eater from him right now. It's about a uh, Alfred Packer, like America's first uh, convicted cannibal. And it's a yeah. it's a fascinating story and stuff. I just thought it, I don't see the hype that this guy's guy's been deserving or getting. I mean, he but. does. Schechter does really good research. He really does. But his oh, narrative is a little. It's very cut and dry. Yeah, it's a little. His narrative is just choppy, and uh, there are times where it's like reading an encyclopedia, and that has a place. You know, if you're doing research, like, that has a good place to it. But I like more sort of – there's got to be – there's a story behind it. Tell me the story as well as the facts. Oh, absolutely. Oh, shit. Let's see. Where – damn damn Twitter. I got to start saving shit more often. Fucking, or be, I, less, I, less, I, be less famous. That's all. Yeah, that, that That's it right there. That's the problem. I'm just too damn famous for this shit. I hopped yeah. on Twitter for, like, a, a month, and I'm a – damn celebrity all right here we go it really is i I should just cut back (laughs) um all right the uh the i am the imdb journey podcast at imdb journey would like to know would you rather crawl through a pit of spiders or swim through a pool of snakes oh snakes oh snakes totally Sorry, why? Uh, what? Oh, you're okay. I was I was gonna throw out some like some caveats because they didn't give me any. Because uh, when they asked me the question, my mind went to, well, are we dealing with poisonous spiders and snakes, or like what is it just one particular like, species, or how and, and how far are we going? So I was gonna be like, I was gonna throw at you um an Olympic swimming pool length, and you either have to swim through the snakes or spiders, and I was gonna, you know, some of them are like venomous but not enough to kill you just like get you a little sick and nauseous but you'd still go with the snakes huh oh yeah yeah yeah, oh, you're, yeah, yeah. You're, you're a braver person than i because it's fuck, fuck. Spiders are just, first of all spiders are, are icky to me <laughs> and they're, they're squishy in a way that like snakes for the most part if i land on one the squish is going to stay within the squish you know what i mean like it's it's 
snake well, skin doesn't burst just because you stepped on it whereas a spider will absolutely explode and i don't need that well, thank you so much for that image but i don't need that <laughs> um well, see, that, 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 that that was that was my because i was going to say spiders because i just for the sole purpose of uh i could crush those motherfuckers and uh, like i i could andy do frame my way through a fucking swimming pool of spiders to get oh, out on the other side come out clean on the other side yeah, yeah no i don't think i would ever be clean again so there's that plus i i am allergic to tarantulas oh okay well, what if there because, were no tarantulas in the mix? Yeah, well, no, just in case. Because I don't know <laughs> what other spiders are related to them. Like, I haven't gone down that particular rabbit hole because no. But I am allergic to bee stings. And oh, okay. bees apparently have the same or very close to the same venom as tarantulas. Oh, wow. I, didn't, I was not aware of that. I, you know, <laughs> these are the things you learn when you're allergic to shit. So... That's crazy. I was a beekeeper yeah. for years. I didn't. I don't ever remember that shit. But I didn't I never really learned it until I was allergic. Yeah, you, exactly. You won't find out until that first sting. I actually didn't get. I wasn't allergic until I was like nineteen. I had had several encounters early on with no problem. Um, but they say that that can happen. Like you sort of your yeah. histamine reaction can get worse and worse over time. Yeah, allergies can just come up at any point. Like I love my dogs to death, but there is that chance that one day I am allergic to the dander. Right. And so that's what happened with the bee stings. And so then they were like, oh, by the way, you can't get a tarantula either. And I'm like, you know what? I, you just changed all of my plans for the rest of the day. Yeah. I, I was, I was just about to go to PetSmart and get one. I had a terrarium all set up. God damn it. I know. <laughs> uh, so you're, you're braver than I am. Like I, I, I can't do fuck. I can't do snakes. They, they give me the heaviest of GBs. Um, <laughs> I, I, I was, I was with a girl at one time and she, uh, she had this six foot boa constrictor that, you know, for the, if it's in a, if it's in a tank or a cage or whatever the fuck, that's fine. I I can look at it, but she would let this thing out of the tank and let it roam around the apartment while we slept. And I would, I woke up one night to this thing slithering around my legs. I'm just saying, no, fuck, fuck this shit. I am out. I, your I, I an- bro- your I anaconda up- don't want none. Hell fucking no. I, I broke up with her right then and there. Like, I can't do this. Like, um, I, I mean, things weren't great with us to begin with, but that was like really the, like, if you're going to let, let your snake cuddle up, because snakes don't cuddle. I mean, if it's going to line up next to you, it's wanting to make sure that they can eat your ass. And I don't want to be around when something like that goes down. <laughs> right. Fair. I mean. Fuck, fuck that. So, so it's like, I, even if like the snakes were like staying on top of the like pool and I can just swim underneath it, it's still, it still freaked me out. I couldn't do it. Uh, well um let's see uh the chewed gum podcast over at chewed gum pod wants to know what animal fight would you love to see a shark like like a shark or gorilla or like two like if you could pick two animals from the animal kingdom and see them duke it out what do you, what would it be huh like i i, I i'm not big on like like watching animal fights either or anything like that. Yeah, well, it's not even about not big on. It's just I have to think. I have to think about this one because I'm I'm leaning like, 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 towards like, something bizarre, like you know, a, a a komodo dragon and a pissed off duck or something like that. I mean, it's oh, one's I'm got one's got to awesome. be a murder bird and an owl. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I can see that. So like, I would um, say you know an owl versus um, like a, a kangaroo. Giraffe. Oh, kangaroo would be good too. Yeah. See, I, I, I think I'd go with um, like a giraffe versus uh, like an ocelot or some kind of small, like wild feral cat. I like, I like to see if they use that neck and just like swing down and fucking headbutt that sucker. I get, you get enough, you get enough <laughs> momentum doing that. You can punt that fucking cat across the savannah, no problem. <laughs> right. <laughs> Oh shit! Uh, fair. Yeah. No, fair. I mean, I just I I feel morally obligated to use the murder bird. But that's sort of my brand, as it were. And uh, and then I'm thinking, yeah, I think I think I, like a pissed off kangaroo. Oh, kangaroos get vicious when they get pissed off too. Yeah, that's, that's what a, I'm saying. And, 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 and for some reason, I keep seeing videos of like what look to be like kangaroos on steroids, where they're all fucking super buffed out and intimidating looking like fuck fuck that i ain't getting in that pouch i'll get i'll go for another <laughs> kangaroos need to do a fucking uber app like when why isn't australia jumping all over that shit that would be amazing 
I mean, it might be a little on the gross side, but yeah, I, I, I feel like you get the right kangaroo for the job. You could transport at least a small child somewhere. I mean, away sometimes. Like I have, I have four kids, and so there are <laughs> days just, where all I want is just take them away. Like I don't care. Put, how put them in a pouch and pick a direction and go. Just go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's fucking great. Uh, all right. Well, um, the I got one more from the Twitter verse. And then uh, I'll jump back over to, to some of my own personal favorites for you. Um, the Raw Opinion Podcast um, over at Raw Opinion Pod wants to know, uh, do you think Bigfoot is an animal or a time traveler? And if neither one, like, what do you think he is? But I think he's a guy in a gorilla suit. Oh, so you don't, you don't believe in Bigfoot? I just don't. I, I would like to. But I feel like we're so overpopulated and we have so many people who do like the extreme camping shit where they're out for days and they're not making a lot of noise. And, you know, if nobody's like we, we put, well, who's A&E had that show alone up in Vancouver, B.C., where they're plunking guys all over this island and they're quiet because they're alone. And if none of them found a fucking Bigfoot, like, come on. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I hear you. It's a. Uh... It is a little ridiculous. Like at this point, there isn't really any hidden corners of the earth aside from like what's what's in the ocean depths. Um, so I feel like if Cave, if Big, if Bigfoot was a real thing, I feel like he'd be more like um, what was that? Like it's like like some kind of creature from like the Descent, where he's like a, a super like evil cave dwelling monster that doesn't really come out. But uh, I would love to think that Bigfoot was a human being who had for some reason traveled back in time and his time machine got busted. So he could, so he's now stuck in this time period trying to fix his machine to get back to the future. And somehow he's through the process of like traveling through back in time. It forced all of his hair to, to grow the way it is. So we mistake him as a fucking ape monster, but he's just this human being looking for his flux capacitor guy in a gorilla suit one way or the other like that's i just i'm, oh, I'm, more, I'm with you I'm I, I really don't open to the idea really, of time machine than animal by this i point. agree like I, I don't i don't believe i don't believe he exists like i would love i would love it like same thing with the loch ness monster it would be great if we lived in a world where that was a real thing but let's be real people just have imaginations and the right person with the right imagination and the motivation to do something with it can create a hoax like this exactly um, until we've had some degree of like legit evidence, legit, not debunked evidence. I'm just skeptical. It's me. I will happily apologize to Bigfoot immediately before he rips my head off <laughs> if necessary. Well, I mean, I, from what I, from what I can gather, as long as you throw, if you, as long as you have like a bag of like Jack Leak, Jack Link's beef jerky with you, he seems to leave you alone. Just like throw the bag out, out at him and he'll just go to town on it. Well, but why would he be so st- – if he's smart enough to avoid human contact so far, why would he be so stupid as to not rip my head off once he knows that I've seen him? Well, I mean, maybe he's maybe he's aware of, like, who's going to believe this person. I'm pretty smart. Oh, I, I'm not saying you're not, but it's, like, the same thing when people get abducted by, by aliens. They're like, well, maybe they won't wipe their memories because, come on, who's going to believe that? That's a crazy thing. No one can comprehend that. Yeah, well, I don't. So that's. <laughs> I don't believe them. So there's that. <laughs> oh shit. Uh, all right. Well, um, I got one more question here for you. Um, now, are, are you? I know you're not big on horror movies, but are you? A, are you much of like a a movie watching person, like a cinephile? Not really? No. Sorry. Um, I, well, I'm uh, hard th- of hearing. Oh, okay, okay. And so um, I have a hard time seeing movies in the theater. Um, and usually by the time they come out to, you know, whatever Netflix or DVD, they've been spoiled by five thousand people. Oh yeah, I know. Like God, God forbid. But like that, I I, I love to like I, I'm the I'm the the jerk that like I'll walk out, I'll go to a movie and I'll watch it and then I'll come out and I it's the same. I use the same line every time, regardless of what movie I'm watching. As I'm walking out and I pass a bunch of people, I'll just be like, Oh my God, I can't believe Darth Vader was Luke Skywalker's father. And like just 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 to see how many people get that reaction of like what the fuck he's spoiling something. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But um, well, I I I've been wondering this since uh, 
like I, I know you're not big on movies, but we'll go down this rabbit hole anyway. Um, like because everything, everything in the cinematically seems to be thrown into its own universe these days. Like it seems like movies have a hard time standing alone on themselves, so they have to like tie it into another series of films. And I see this trend just growing more and more until it hits a breaking point. And I was wondering what what movie series do you think it will be that ends the cinematic universe motif? I don't know. I mean, it, it kind of feels like Star Wars is trying real hard. Yeah, they're they're doing a pretty good job of it. And like as much as I enjoy some of the Marvel movies, I kind of feel like they're just it's just a one trick pony. They keep telling the same fucking story over and over again. Well, they're reaching the point where they're going to be like, you know, Groot plus his, plus Bugs Bunny. Like, what the fuck? Oh, I know. I I, I I'm actually because because Disney owns both of those universes, so I can't wait to see like the Guardians of the Galaxy like come up in the Star Wars universe or some shit. Like somehow in Avengers four, like like they end up dry flying past the Millennium Falcon or something. Like I I could totally see it happening at least within the next few years. It's gonna be like the fucking Flintstones meets the Jetsons. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And yeah. it just it just goes too far. They're jumping the shark. Uh, yeah, I got oh, it, 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 that, that shark's done been jumped a long time ago. Exactly. <laughs> they're, they're, it's- it's, it's just that concept of like i mean anymore there it's so rare for a movie to come out that's like wow that's unique oh yeah exactly like it, it, there aren't original thoughts and i know this is like everyone's saying this shit like i'm not saying anything that ha- like no one's fucking thought of before you know so i'm not gonna get too hash and too far into it but i feel like um I feel like eventually the way things are going, especially with how Disney is taking all their movies and converting them into like live action animation, I guess you kind of say, um, I feel like other cartoons are going to start going that angle. And I think I'd like to think that the, the, uh, the cinematic movie that's going to ruin it is going to be like, they're going to come out with a series of my little pony movies. And because of the ever growing brony audience, people are going to flock to them, but eventually it's just going to like, it's going to go too far and that's going to be the end of it. I'd like to think that that's going to be it. Cause if that's the case then maybe they can take out my little pony altogether too. two birds, one stone. You know, that would be fine. If, uh, you know, Thomas the Tank Engine meets My Little Pony and then everybody crashes. That's fine. Fair. Oh, my God. I thought you you just wrote a movie right there. That's fucking genius. <laughs> you, you, stole the, you stole the ticket. I would so see that movie. Like Mike, have, so maybe like, it didn't end yet. I don't know. You have Quentin Tarantino direct the Thomas the Tank Engine movie. <laughs> that would be amazing. Okay, I'd see that too. Uh, yeah. Anyway. Like, like I, I, I can't stand the whole Charles Manson like popularity going on, but I can't wait for that fucking movie to come out. Oh yeah, I mean, I'd watch it just to. Okay, so here's the, here's part of the reason that I'm not much of a movie watcher is that I suck at suspension of disbelief. Oh, I have I'm, a really I'm, hard I'm, time with it. I'm the same way. Like I'll watch a movie, and I'll just bullshit. Like <laughs> yeah, that's not how it's done. And so, like, I used to watch the show Bone. Excuse me, Bones with my kid, and they would do things. And I'm not allowed in the room when Bones is on anymore because I'm like, that's not how it works that's not what you know that's not procedure (laughs) and so you know for the most part like i try to steer clear of any you know law and order or law and order svu or law and order preschool or whatever the fuck they're doing now because i i understand they have to boil things down for the sake of time but it you know and for the sake of the, the the average you know dipshit watching just can't cope with the they think can't cope with the uh intricacies of the movie until they're actually in the criminal justice system and then fuck them but you know i just can't like it makes me crazy because i'm like it wouldn't be that hard to make this realistic well it's 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 funny you mentioned bones because we uh my fiance fiance and i would watch that show a lot like we we binge watch like we'll watch one show the whole way through and then we'll pick something else and we went through the, the run of bones and she's a big reader, so I was like, well, how about I get you the book series that this show is based off of? And I got her the first book, and it's it's right away they've taken so many liberties from the actual storyline. It's it's pretty much like it's not based off the book at all, with the exception of the character name. And like, like the storyline, if they actually stuck with it in the book, it would have been like an awesome HBO series where it's like it's incredibly dark and twisted, but... 
And for some reason, they decided to fluff it up for the purposes of putting it on Fox. And then, of course, you throw fucking David Boreanaz into the mix. And I don't know. I, I, I've lost hope as far as, like, movies and entertainment and shit goes. Like, we're we're just rehashing the same things over and over again. Um, and it's getting really hard to, like, like, I love Stephen King. And I'm a big fan of his books and, like, some of the movies. But ever since it became popular, now all of a sudden they're going to fucking go down the Stephen King rabbit hole again and redo everything. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing is that everything's a remake and it just, I don't know. Like, like some, mm. some, some of them I'm, I'd be excited for, like, I, but I don't know that if they touch them. Like, if I would love to see an actual, another remake of The Shining, but I don't feel like they'd ever go, they'd ever touch that one again just because of how fucking sacred that movie is for some damn reason. I don't know. What can you do? Fucks it. I mean, Jack Nicholson. That's, that is my answer there. And Shelley Duvall. And, uh, what's his name? You said it already once. Is it Kubrick that directed that? Uh, yep. Was deliberately and acutely abusive to Shelley Duvall, Duvall through that movie. Oh yeah. Like, what, what, what wasn't that like? Was that just to get her into that character? Yeah, or? to get her into the character, which it's not okay with me. Like, let's let her be an actress. She thinks she's an actress. You hired her for a reason. Let's not cause permanent trauma. Oh, absolutely. I, I feel the same way. Like. It, with uh with actors that go too far into that method sort of um acting like uh mm-hmm, mm-hmm. like christian Chris, i go i go right to christian bale in the machinist um i don't know if you've ever seen that but he uh he ended up wa- losing like om- over 100 pounds and if you actually mm-hmm. google the image he's like this scrawny like holocaust survivor it looks like it's it's fucking yeah. crazy what people will put themselves through it at what point are you like it's not okay to like we can Christian, we can put special effects on you. You don't have to do this. Well, yeah, let's let the makeup department do their thing, or let's just whatever. I there, yeah, there are. It's like, more like, to me you know, just the, the the abusive ways that people like. There's enough nastiness in the world. We don't need to perpetrate it because of your job. Oh, absolutely. I mean, there's 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 a line between like getting into character and just straight up mental illness. And I feel like when you when you put your body through something like that, just for the purposes of being on camera, I feel like there's, there's gotta be something wrong up there. Yeah. I mean, it's not, it's not okay. <laughs> Hashtag you know? not okay. Yeah, exactly. It just, I always, with, with method actors, there comes a point where it's like, how insecure are you? Like, do you really think you can't get back into character tomorrow? Oh, I, I, exactly. Like, um, I, 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 I just thought and it, it's a, it's gonna it's gonna affect everybody else on the crew as well. Like if people aren't gonna be able to like get comfortable if you're sitting there talking to them like the fucking Joker the whole time or something. Right, exactly. And uh, and so you end up being avoided the whole time, and then you feel bad, and you have to tell yourself it's because you're such a great artist, and maybe it's because you're a shitty artist. Because I think a lot of great artists know how to turn it on and turn it off. Oh, absolutely. That's it. it you got to be able to. You know, if you're going to function in the real world, you've got to function in the real world. You've got to pay bills. You've got to clean your house. You've got to, you know, speak to your kids. Oh, absolutely. Well, I mean, I, that that about wraps it up for what I've got for you. Um, is uh, Would you like uh, – you? Uh, I, we didn't really cover it much in the beginning. I'd like to give you a chance to talk about your show now if you'd like to, um, to give give people a, uh, a chance to see what, see what it's all about. Sure. Um, ignorance was bliss. It's at – iwb podcast all over the place and it's about every fucking thing it really is like i i i started off thinking that i was going to be talking mostly to myself and then i was going to be talking mostly about like really extreme crimes and diagnoses and shit like that and i do that's in there but i also talk to people just about their lives about what it's like to be a college professor or an er nurse you know, or a novelist or whatever. Like I try, I kind of run the gamut and I find that people kind of like all of the above and people are interested in hearing me talk about schizophrenia, but they're also really interested in hearing me talk about plain old anxiety because everybody has it. Oh yeah, absolutely. It's, I, I, I've just been jumping on, on recently and getting, getting my, waking my way through the catalog. It's great because you, uh, you do, you do relate to you. It's, it's a totally relatable show where you can listen to people share their stories and be like, Oh well, yeah, I've been, I've been through something similar to that. I, I understand what's going on and it's not boring at all by any means. Like you're, you're engaged in what these people are saying and you want to like, you, 
like you like really want to listen every, through every minute of it. Um, after everybody, after you, after you get off this, uh, after off this show, go ahead and go for you. Check out, check out ignorance with bliss. It's absolutely worth the listen. Thanks. It's been super fun and it's a great community. Everybody, you know, I, I've met a few assholes in the world, which in the podcasting world, which makes me feel better because that means I'm, it's probably not me. Do you oh, know yeah, what I mean? Like, like there's a certain number of assholes. And so if I'm meeting them, it's like, okay, everyone I meet makes it that much less likely that I'm the asshole. So good. That's cool. Oh yeah. It, it helps. It helps weed out like who you, who you do and do not connect with. Like when, when I put out, when I put out ads looking for guests, I get so many people that are like interested in coming on, but they've never heard the show. And I'm like, well, maybe you should check out what we're all about ahead of time. That way you don't come on here and like, bitch about it later on because you were super offended from some horrible shit that I asked you or something. <laughs> right. And, and, and yeah. I, I've, I've actually had people be, do that where they're like, oh, well, uh, I think my favorite quote was from some, uh, some mom, I'm not going to name their names by any means, but it was, a, it was a podcast for moms about moms. And they're like, oh, well, moms aren't really into the whole fun and swearing thing. And I'm like, no, I'm pretty, oh, sure, that's that. just, I'm pretty <laughs> sure that's just you. Yeah, no, I have four kids and, and that's, you know, yeah, no, fuck them. <laughs> like if you have four kids and you don't go through your life without cursing like there's got to be something something off there seriously I, I mean it's it's one of your only one of your but i mean that's the thing is that i think people need to do their research it's on them and every once in a while i've been surprised by somebody where i'm like oh i didn't think you were a dick now i know you know oh, it's yeah. just helpful to know and and it's just it's been fun so well, well, I mean, you got to be doing something right. You get, you do have, you do have quite the listenership coming on. And uh, I'm, I'm actually, we're, we're recording these right now. We're about to be doing back to back episodes where I'm about to jump on your show right now. Um, and I'm actually really looking forward to it. Yeah. And I will advertise once that happens, it won't be like overnight from now because I have a backlog of interviews that I haven't put online yet, but I will certainly advertise it once that happens. Oh yeah, so that's, fine. that's fine. Pay attention. Uh, all right, excellent. Well, I mean, that's that's a that's gonna wrap it up here. Um, thank you again. I got I gotta thank the the followers on Twitter. You know, you guys are awesome. Um, the the listenership and the audience has been building more and more with each week and every day. You guys are fucking awesome. You keep keep the random questions coming. Keep the hypothetical scenarios coming my way. I'm more than happy to discuss them all. Um, we do have our sack them up bad tattoo contest. I do want to keep plugging that for everybody. Uh, you don't have to have artistic talent. And I'm dead. I'm dead fucking serious when I say if it's a bad enough tattoo design, I will put it on my body for the sake of this show. That's how much I love you all. <laughs> That's pretty impressive. Oh yeah. Well, it's just a sign that I'm a fucking nut. <laughs> but I, <laughs> I, I accept, either way, I accept this. Oh yeah. Like I, I. I mean, I've been saying it for years. I would love to have a joke tattoo. That's just like even if it's a one one man inside joke for myself, it'd be fucking perfect. But if I can incorporate the show and the listeners and something like this, and it, it gets everybody involved, and so like yeah, that, why not? And uh, we don't have as as right as of right now, we don't have any sort of merchandising to do for prizes or anything like that. But come it, it, the, this contest is going on through the end of February, so come March first, there will be prizes available for that one listener or that one listener who does have that winning design so please please send them my way uh sack them up dot or sack them up dot sundays at gmail.com um and that's that's gonna wrap it up for today uh i've been brandon fisher that's been kate and we are out